Hey Naomi, I'm Borja Genomes Guzman. I am a postdoc researcher at Indea Networks. Also, I am uh, I'm the project manager of, of Enlighten. And, and I feel quite comfortable presenting this, this slide because uh, one year and a half ago, I was in your place, okay? I, I finished my PhD. And then I think that I am in a, in a good position for give you some, some tips for, for succeeding in the, in the PhD. Okay. Uh, okay, according to this, this uh, source uh, dynamics team, uh, and, I, and I totally agree, uh, uh, I think that there are several uh, struggles uh, that the PhD student face during, during the, the thesis. Okay? Uh, in some occasions, well, the first, first of the things are isolation. Okay, if some occasions you, you feel that you are alone uh, doing your, your job. Uh, of course, all these ten problems we should uh, address them. Okay, and we should uh, avoid them. Okay. Um, the second struggle is the stress. Okay, we are dealing with uh, with deadlines for submitting some papers, and somehow this kind of task are producing uh, stress on, on, on ourselves. Okay. Third is a conflict with your supervisor. Of course, this is in in, in any in any in any job, uh, you disagree with uh, in some occasions with your supervisor, and you have to learn how to manage these kind of conflicts. Uh, funding issue, okay, this is not your case, okay. You got a you got a, a very good grant, but some PhD students have funding issues. Okay. The fifth is time management. Okay, uh, we are uh, young people, and we have to learn how to manage our our time. Um, a sixth point is the work and life balance. We shouldn't forget about uh, about uh, you know about social uh, social events. You know, don't forget about this because this will help us a lot also for for the for the for the for the, for the PhD. Lack of institutional support, lack of personal support in some occasions because uh, sometimes our family doesn't understand that uh, what, what we are doing and we have to look for some support out of our family or our relatives or, 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 or some other people. Also concerns our, about our, 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 our future. This always happen and here in the Enlighten we'll be, we will give you the tools for uh, clarifying a bit more your future and to, this, to help you for deciding what, what to do after the PhD. And, uh, and in the 10th position, problems with motivation. Okay, this is very important because motivation is the key for getting key ideas and for succeeding in the PhD. Uh, with the Enlighten Network, of course, uh, we are trying to minimize these struggles, okay, isolation, because you are within a network working with uh, 15 uh, ESRs. Uh, so, you normally you, you shouldn't feel like alone, okay, doing doing research. Also within your institution, you for sure I, I'm pretty sure that you have some other colleagues that are uh, doing similar jobs. <clears throat> Conflict with your supervisor, of course. If you disagree with some point and you don't get a solution, you can now you have two uh, let's say two 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 representatives in the supervisory board meeting. So. So you can uh, include in the in the agenda of, of the next supervisory board meeting some conflict with your supervisor and whatever. Uh, funding issue: you got a very relevant grant, so you don't have this issue. Uh, lack of personal support: of course, we are a, a great network, so uh, you are not alone doing your research, and you should uh, receive the help of, of other people. Okay. As I said before, you will receive some training about uh, you know, how to create a, net, uh, a company, uh, what to do in the future, and so on. So I think that we are gonna give you or provide you the tools for deciding about the future. And um, problem with the motivation, okay? I think that, uh, for example, this, this training event, in this training event, we are giving you some, some tools for motivate yourself and, and so on. And in this training event, we are going to focus on how to manage with the stress, how to manage with, uh, or how to learn about conflict management, time management, also in some, in some problems with motivation. Okay, so I think that this training event will be very helpful for your 
for your PhD. So during my talk, I'm gonna give you some tips, okay? For this, so this is this comprises some some tips for succeeding with the PhD. First of all, is to ask experts for advice. Okay, so not only supervisor, but also uh, you know some experts in in your institutions in, in within the network. You have to ask because they they was they, they were in the in, in the same position as as you are right now. So you have to ask them. If you have any question, feel free to, to do it, okay? Uh, so now you are doing a thesis, okay? So it's very important to know what is a thesis. A thesis is not a scientific report, okay? A scientific report, in, in a scientific report, you have to write what has been done, how you got it, and some results and summary, okay? A thesis is more than that. A thesis is, is, is above uh, is all, all this, but also it proposes a thesis. I mean, it proposes a main idea, an opinion, a theory of a uh, of, of few, okay? And you have to try to prove it, okay? You have to give evidence for or against this thesis. So uh, this thesis should mean a significant advance in the field, Okay, and you have to improve the people understanding. Okay, so it's very important that you sh you aim to write a thesis and not just a scientific report. Okay. So the first thing that I would like to give you is to publish the results. Okay, this is gonna give you a lot of motivation. It's all it's also very good. You 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 feel very proud of yourself when you when you show when you see uh, your results published in a, in, a, in a good database and it's accessible by everybody, okay? But not only that, um, unpublished results means that you didn't have this job, okay? So uh, if your research doesn't generate papers, it might, it, 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 it is the same as it doesn't exist, okay? So please, is keep this in mind you have to publish good papers and also make it readable okay this picture it said of course this is a joke okay this is a, the supervisor is telling the, the the phd student that okay you got uh, a publication but you wrote, you wrote it in a very easy way okay so it means that you have to hide the results okay this is not true okay you have to write it in a clear way and because it should mean a significant advance and everybody should reproduce or should be able to reproduce your results, okay? This is very important. Uh, so I said, as I said before, new publication must advance the research community knowledge and understanding of the question, okay? It mustn't repeat already published data, okay? They should be original, original results, methods, uh, you have to revise published results, and in some occasions, you got an invitation for writing a review, a survey of, of uh, survey a field or a topic. Okay, in some occasions, normally these these are invited papers. Okay, not not always, but in some occasions, they are invited papers. So, zero citations, articles are not interested to editors. So, you have to write it in an attractive way. Okay, you have to, to draw the attention of the research community for, for, for this publication. And the second tip that I would like to give you is that getting good research ideas takes time. Okay? You shouldn't worry too much about if you spend much time thinking about a problem and you don't get a good ideas and so on. Okay? This will take a lot of time. Okay? Uh, a normal path of an idea is, okay, first of all, you identify, identify a research question, do with finding or not, okay? Collect data, carry out experiments, write up and publish and get impact, okay? But it's very important to be up to date because we are working in research and in research we are using tools and methods that are constantly changing, okay? So it's very important to keep up to date uh, as, as the, the panelists of the previous talk said it's very important to read, read and read, okay? Uh, in, in research, you don't have to, to be uh, like free some, some time, okay? If, if you have free time, you have to read during this time, 
if you have al always something to read and to review uh, the new publication that have been published in, in, in recently in your field. Uh, so develop good ideas take time, okay? And good ideas come when you least expect it, okay? So that's why it's very important that you complement your work with social life. You have to distract with other activities. Uh, good ideas will come when you least expect it. Okay, okay. Even even when you are sleeping, okay, you 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 will dream with 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 uh, research, and you will realize that this is this is totally true. That you are working on a on a on a topic during hour, during days, during weeks, and you get some key idea when you least expect it. The tip number three is to take care of your mental health. Okay, this is not a joke, this is true. Uh, there, there are a lot of publications that demonstrating that, uh, that a lot of PhD students are suffering mental health problems. Okay, so one in two PhD students experiences psychological distress. Okay, and one in three is at risk of a common psychiatric disorder. Okay, this is totally true. Uh, please keep this in mind, try to distract with social life, try to do external activities. This will help a lot to your research. Okay? Try to talk with external people, friends, relatives. Also, of course, leverage the Enlightened Network. Okay? You, you are a great network with 15 ESRs, so please take advantage of this, this network. Okay? When you have a good idea, you have to look for previous works, okay? Um, because for sure there were, very, there were people that have been researching about this idea and you have to uh, review these this, this, uh, this, uh, publications. There are a lot of databases in, you can, if you, in which you can have a look at the recent published uh, papers like ACM, IEEE Explore, Google Scholar, Web of Science, Archive, and many others. Okay, and they are very useful for uh, looking for um, for published uh, recent published papers. Okay, what about effectiveness in research and management? Okay, you have during the PhD, not only you have to do research, but also you have to potentiate good communication and social skills. Okay, potentiate uh, personal responsibility. When you are working in a team, try to share the goals, try to talk about we and not about me. You have to learn how to resolve conflicts, okay? You have to be clear from the beginning, okay? When you are working in a team, clarity helps to reduce friction, okay? Uh, <clears throat> And of course, cl uh, clear responsibility and timeline helps to avoid last minute pressure. Okay. So this is all, also important. And now let's discuss about the thesis document. Okay, before writing a thesis, it's good to discuss and agree on a structure with your supervisor. Okay, try to find a good title Okay, try to select a proper title that, that describes your thesis. Of course, be, be careful with that, okay, because many universities in Europe may not allow to change this title in the future. Okay, to try to select a good title from the beginning. Uh, it depends on, on the university, okay, of, as I said. Uh, try to discuss chapter headings, this, uh, section headings with a brief description in, in each of them and try to decide the order in which the thesis chapter will be written, okay? Typically, the first chapter, which is the introduction and the last chapter, which are conclusion and further work, are written the last. Okay, but this, of course, it depends on, 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 many, on many things, but this is, this is typical, because the, the, the body or the main body of the thesis comprises publications, and they are already published, and it's good to, to, to start writing from, from them. Okay, before writing the final document of the thesis, make sure that you finished all the main experimental work or theoretical work, statistical analysis, okay? 
Otherwise, you may find last minute surprises, and then you have to remake the structure and it will take time. Of course, always there are items to tie it up, to tidy up, but all the main work should be done by the time that you start writing a thesis. Okay, this will save time. Um, yeah, and of course, before you, of course, there were many researchers that have been written a, a thesis in your university. So before going for them, you have to double check what is the standard in previous thesis, okay? Uh, about references, about the format, about the structure and whatever, it's good to have a look at previous thesis, okay, in your university. Uh, okay, this tip is not only for the thesis document, but also for publication. You have to be sure that all figures and tables are clear and stand alone and self-contained, okay? It means that they should include captioned, excess title, Titles, units, labels, uh, legends, everything, okay? But this not only in the thesis, this should be written not only in the thesis document, but also in every publication. And I think that by the time that you are gonna write the thesis, you will have this, this clear, okay? But just not forget, I, I prefer to include it here. Okay, now let's briefly discuss about the thesis contents, okay? Uh, normally, a thesis comprises a series of, uh, of papers, which is the main body of the, of the thesis, with an introduction and with conclusion chapters. But, okay, the thesis components are mainly the key publications of, during, during the PhD. But you shouldn't copy and paste the papers, okay, because they shouldn't be a standalone chapters. You have to write it in a way that everything is interconnected and it should be fluent, okay? So when you read it, everything has to make sense. But publication, of course, are the key, okay? This is, of course, an advantage of some of the work that have already, yeah, when they have already some, some publications in, in the literature. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good practice also to include, in the beginning of the thesis document, you have to include in which publications the content of every chapter appears. Okay, this is a good practice because some of the committee members would like to read more about this and maybe they can go for it and also they can, they want to, to double check what is the impact of, of your publications or whatever, so it's good to include this in the, in the, at the beginning of the thesis. And also it's very important for you to think that this thesis is part of your research not just a duty, okay? So the thesis document is part of the research and it's a document that will be there for, uh, to, be access, to, be, to be accessed by everybody. So it's, it's, it's as important as a publication, okay? A basic PhD thesis structure. Yeah, this is a, this is a basic PhD thesis structure. So it's uh, more or less all the thesis structure are, are more or less the same to have a, First, a th title page, copyright statement, abstract, acknowledgement, a table of contents, of course, introduction of the whole thesis document, background of the whole thesis document, then some middle chapters, which is the main body, the central component of the thesis, and you finish with some conclusions, further work, bibliography, and appendices. But every chapter itself, they, they can include some introduction for every chapter, a state of the art, methods, research, and, and discussion and summary, okay? Because during the PhD, mm, you may have published about different topics. So it's very important to include an introduction in every chapter. So when you write the thesis structure, okay, it's good you follow these this, this, uh, guidelines, okay? In my case, I, I, I did it like this, okay? First, I wrote a, a first draft of the thesis structure. Uh, you have a look at the structures of recently submitted PhDs, okay, documents, your discipline in the, in the, in the university or, 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 or in some other or universities. You should have a look at the, at the structure with your supervisor, okay? And once you get the approval of the supervisor, you start writing like few 
a uh, few information in every chapter, okay? So firstly, you can write like a word length of, re of every chapter. Uh, what is the target for every chapter? Also, you have to allocate what you have already published uh, in the literature, how to put it into this chapter, okay? So how to allocate it. And you have to revisit the structure again and again, okay? After you finish each chapter, have a look, and double check if it makes sense. And also it's a good practice to communicate the structure in the writing. Okay? It will help to get the message, the message across the thesis. It means at the beginning you can state what you are going to say, then you say it, and at the end you summarize what you said. Okay? This will help the, the, the reading. So now I have a quick question here. When to start writing a thesis? Three months before the end of your grant, six months before the end of your grant. I would like that some ESR tell me what is your thought. Come um, yeah. I think it should be six months before the end of grant. Okay, six months. Any other opinion? Yeah, I think yeah. I agree. I think the same. Yeah, yeah I also. Three months since. Uh, so most of you agree that you have to start writing six months, three months before the end of your grant. I heard uh, yeah. the thesis. We started to write. We should start writing the work as it goes. I mean, uh, the thesis is going to include all the research work that we have done throughout our PhD thesis. So it would be good uh, if uh, we continue to write it in some chunks as we go instead of keeping everything till the very end i mean uh, we okay. can this, but we can continue to write our um uh, findings and observations uh, along the entire um, time of okay period. okay bismillah yeah that's a good point so let me tell you for those that think that they should start writing three months before the end of the grant or six months before the end of the grant, let me tell you that no, <laughs> okay? You have to start writing the day you start your PhD, okay? Write it all down, exactly all down, okay? This is very important. So write early and often, okay? Write and research simultaneously. Review what you have written often. Okay, be critical with your writing and results. Make a list of everything you are writing during the PhD and keep it updated. And of course, don't do not throw anything away. Okay, it means that everything that you write along your thesis is very important. Okay, research proposal, literature survey, data analysis, and new ideas, report for your supervisor, early draft of papers minutes of meetings exactly everything okay everything is important okay so I start writing as soon as possible so now let's discuss about what the committee will be looking for okay depending on on the chapter for example in the review of literature it is very important or what, what they are going to look for is if that is if it is relevant if it is, if it is comprehensive and up to date Okay. If the review is critical and is also, if it is also linked to methodology employed in the thesis. Okay. Regarding the methodology, the hypothesis should be well defined. Okay. And let's say the research problem should be, that, that is going to be addressed should be well defined. It should be clear and well justified, the methodology that you are going to use. And of course, there are limitations, okay? And you should identify these limitations. So many people think that a thesis should contain or should contain everything or related to this topic. This is not true, okay? Every thesis has limitations. And it's very important that you are aware of these limitations because they will, this will help you for defend the thesis, okay? You don't have time for proving exactly everything, okay? You will get new ideas. Even the last day of your thesis, you will get new ideas, and this will be for further work, okay? These, these new ideas will be addressed after the PhD. So 
in the in the result sections the committee will look for um, whether the the hypothesis have been properly tested if the analysis is clear and do present the results in a in a in a clear way and regarding the conclusions if you have identified the limits of your research as i said before uh, if the main points or outcomes in the thesis have been highlighted and if the speculations were well grounded okay and finally uh, yeah, I think that most of you are realizing that the PhD is, is a very complex and long exercise. Okay? You are addressing a single problem uh, during, and you have to, you are finding this the problem, or, uh, you are trying to solve this problem uh, in, in three years and, or, or something, yeah, in three years, around three years. So sometimes you are, you get lost. Okay. You are researching and you uh, are not aware of what is the final goal of, of the thesis. So sometimes it's a good practice to try to, to synthesize okay, and try to ask questions like, okay, what I'm trying to do in my thesis and try to get a response in a single sentence. Okay. It's a good practice also to, to participate in thesis talk. I don't know if uh, some of you already know what is the thesis talk. But this is very, it's a good practice to, to, to participate in on that. And many universities now, they are organizing thesis talks for like, you know, like a, like a contest or yeah, something like that. And they normally, they give some prizes. Uh, so a thesis talk, it's like a, to present your PhD in only three minutes. So it's a very good practice to synthesize and to try to express what you are researching on to the public at large. Okay. This is very good because this will clarify what, what you are doing. And yeah, so some conclusions, we have identified typical struggles of a PhD student. We have to be careful with, with them, and to try to, to be aware of them. Of them. Uh, some tips. I try to give you some tips for increasing the effectiveness of a thesis. Uh, we have discuss about the, the content and the roadmap, how to optimize the success of a thesis by posing key questions for every thesis section. We have discussed about the structure again uh, also. Um, yeah, we have learned that everything along the PhD thesis must be written down. This is very important, okay? Write as soon as possible and write exactly everything that you, that comes to your mind. And finally, a th synthesis is sometimes a good exercise. 